Are you waiting for me? Yeah. Oh, just wait for me. Here we go. One, two, three, four. We have a hope. I have a future, I have a destiny that is yet awaiting me. My life's not over, a new beginning's just begun. I have a hope, I have this hope. God has a plan, it's not to harm me. But it's to prosper me And to hear me when I call He intercedes for me Working all things for my good Though trials may come We have this hope I will yet praise Him My great Redeemer I will yet stand up And give Him glory with my life He takes my against me so tell me whom then tell me whom then shall I fear he has prepared for me great works he'll help me to complete I have a hope I have this hope goodness and mercy they're gonna follow me and I'll forever dwell in the house of my great king, no eye has ever seen All his preparing there for me, though trials may come I have this hope I will yet praise him, my great redeemer I will yet stand up and give him glory with my life He takes my darkness and he turns it It's the God of heaven loves me. There's still hope for me today. Cause the God of heaven loves me. There's still hope for me today. Cause the God of heaven loves me. I will yet pray. this hope that we have. Please take a seat. Good morning, church. How's everyone today? Good to see you here on the first Sunday of our Missions Month. This, this month, you're going to hear from uh, different speakers, some of our missionaries, as well as missions projects that we support all through the month of August. And then at the end, we're going to be taking up our Faith Promise Pledges. Our Faith Promise Pledges will help us set 
how much for the coming year that we're able to send out to our missionaries. Our brother Bong, he's going to be giving us a report later on as well. Maybe not today, I don't think. The, the, report's not, or the report is today. The brother Bong's going to be giving us a report about the past year, some goals that we'd like to set for the coming year as well. Also, the verse that really we want you to have in your heart and in your mind throughout this whole month, just let it sink deep into the depths of your soul and your mind in John chapter 3. And in John chapter number 3, verse number 17. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Isn't that a wonderful thought? I mean, the idea that, that the Lord himself, he calls and he sends, and it's the Lord through his Holy Spirit that brings salvation to people, not just here, but all around the world. And that's why we send out missionaries to different places all around the world that all who can hear or will hear might be saved. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let's thank him for his goodness. Let's open our time in prayer, just asking the Lord's blessings upon not just today, but this entire month coming up. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, it's you to whom we look for as the author and finisher of our faith, the one who has created all things, designed all things, for it's you, Lord, who brings your Holy Spirit to us, who empowers us. You give us our testimony through Christ Jesus, our Lord, and through the salvation that you bring. Lord, may we be willing to share that testimony with others far and wide throughout the world, to the ends of the earth, that all might hear and others who choose and, and know and receive you as their Savior, that they too, being welcomed into to your kingdom, have your way in our hearts this morning. And Lord, through the worship time, the music, the singing, the teaching, the preaching, all that's to be done, may we glorify you and may we be faithful in following out the great commission that you've given to us. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you and God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Mike. Let's stand again and let's get focused on only Jesus.
Can you hear it, IPC? There's a new hallelujah. Thank you, the team. That was wonderful, and it is wonderful to be here on week number one of IBC's Missions Emphasis uh, Month. IBC has always been a missions-focused church. How many mission projects do we currently support as a church family? Can somebody name? No? How many? Close. <laughs> Very close. Currently, we support 20, 20, and by God's grace, we're going to be able to support some more this year. IBC practices something that we call faith promise missions, uh, and each year, 
Every member of the church has an opportunity to make a pledge. And that is a pledge in your heart between you and the Lord. And at the end, when we turn in our pledges, uh, we don't even ask that you put your name on it. Uh, we're not going to come back and say, hey, you haven't met your pledge. Or what's going on here? You owe some extra. Uh, this is something between you and the Lord. And it's something that we just challenge you to pray about. God, what would you have me to pledge to give this year for the cause of missions? We encourage you to give a weekly pledge. Um, and so we have a target. I'm going to let Brother Bong uh, later, after the message time, to come and share with us that target, what it is this year that we'd like to see by God's grace. And then you need to be praying, God, what would you have me to do to help meet that target? We encourage the kids, children, be a part. You too can have a faith promise pledge that by God's grace and by faith, you will give this amount of money for missions this year, this, uh, each week this year. So pray about these things. Ushers, would you go ahead and begin to make your way forward? It's our time to uh, worship in our uh, giving, in our tithes, in our offerings, in our missions. And uh, remember to be faithful in uh, praying for all of our missionary projects. This week, we have a missionary of the week that we want to focus on. Uh, let's pray for David and Juan Yin. David and Juan Yin are in what we refer to as a CAN, C-A-N. And what does CAN stand for? Any of the kids know what C-A-N stand for? Uh, um, Jaden? No? Ethan? Really? The two top students? Uh, wait, wait, wait. Where's Noel? <laughs> Noel, what does CAN stand for? Wow, that is our top student over there, so sorry. Sorry. If you didn't hear, he said it's a creative access nation. And these are places that you just can't go in and say, I'm a missionary, I want to come in and, and plant a church and win people to Christ. You, there have to be other reasons to be there, and so they, they do legitimately go in for these other reasons. But while they're there, uh, they also see themselves as sharing Christ as a missionary and uh, helping establish and strengthen local churches. So we thank the Lord for people like David and Wanyin. This is me and Jojo um, when we went on a, a mission trip a few years ago, uh, meeting with them and finding out what all they were doing. Uh, it's a fascinating, fascinating when you see them in person and see what, uh, what God has been doing in their life. They do have a unique uh, part of their ministry is working uh, with... Um, yeah, kids, uh, children uh, of prisoners. Uh, so it's a very unique ministry where many of these kids kind of get forgotten, left behind when their own parents are uh, being held in prison. And so they help uh, minister and take care of their needs uh, physically and spiritually. Let's give thanks to the Lord for the offering last week, 9683 of which missions was $1,499. And so we're thankful to the Lord for uh, his provisions. Um, and I, again, just urge you, encourage you, just be faithful to the Lord. And remember to pray for all of our missionaries. And this week, uh, David and Juan Yin, if you would. Let's dedicate this offering to our Lord, shall we? Father in heaven, thank you for the time of worship that we've had. It's been so wonderful to be in your house with brothers and sisters and to sing out to our God, our Savior. Lord, we thank you for the call to missions, to go and make disciples of all nations. And we thank you for people like David and Wan Yin that help us to achieve that. They are in a place that we are not able to be, that you haven't sent us to. And we thank you for their faithfulness and obedience. And we ask that you provide their needs Watch over their family, the children. I pray that you would bless their labor, their faithfulness to the gospel, and uh, help them, Lord, in uh, all of their ministry, and in particular with ministering to the uh, children who, who um, could be left behind in so many ways with their parents taken uh, to prison for various uh, things. Father, watch over them, I pray. Bless this offering and use it for your work, your purposes. 
And may you be glorified in everything that is done. In Jesus' name, amen. You ever seen a cuter duet before? <laughs> Jackson and Silas. That was wonderful. Wonderful to see. How many of you know that song, um, Jesus Loves the Little Children? Let's sing it one time, shall we? Jesus loves the little children. All the children of the world In yellow, black, and white They are precious in His sight Jesus loves the little children of the world That's our theme this uh, month is precious in His sight and That's everybody Everybody I am blessed and privileged to be a part of International Baptist I've always loved what God has been doing here, saving people um, from all parts of the world. And right here, we have uh, global missions uh, in our church. And so that is wonderful, wonderful to see. Um, at this time, though, we're, we have the next section, which is worshiping the Creator. So I'm going to ask my brother, Logan, would you come and read us today's reading? Thank you.
Good morning, IBC. This morning's topic is short, but very interesting. Lovely picture, Pastor. <laughs> fingernails. We all know that fingernails and toenails are there to protect our fingers and toes. They act like tiny little hard hats. But why do fingernail, fingernails, when torn or nibbled, tear across the nail instead of down towards the nail bed? Scientists have found that it actually takes twice the energy to cut nails lengthwise as compared to crosswise. Nails are made of three layers of keratin. The top and bottom layers are found to have randomly arranged fibers of keratin, this gives the nail its strength. The middle layer holds a key to the nail, tearing crosswise. The keratin fibers run parallel to the base of the nail. Can you imagine if our nails could easily tear lengthwise down to the nail bed? We would be in agony most of our lives from the pain. God, in his wisdom, takes care of even the smallest details of our lives the way a fingernail tears. So the next time you snag a fingernail, thank God that it tears across the nail instead of lengthwise. Job 10 verse 12 says, You gave me life and showed me kindness. Thank you. Amen. Very interesting. I always love his readings and I, I hope you enjoy it too. It's a, a way that we do worship the Lord by acknowledging Him as our Creator and amazing things He's, he's, he's done. Uh, before I introduce our speaker this morning, uh, I'd like to ask one of our young people to come and do the Bible reading uh, from the book of Acts, uh, from the speaker's message. So, Brother Ethan, would you like to come and do the reading, please? Good morning, church. Today's passage is from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 13. Please stand. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And when this sound occurred, the multitude came together and were confused, because everyone heard them speak in his own language. Then they were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, Look, are not all these men who speak Galileans? And how is it that we hear each in our own language in which we were born? Parthians and Medes and Elamites, those dwelling in Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya adjoining Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them speaking in our own tongues the wonderful works of God. So they were all amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, whatever could this mean? Others mocking said, they are full of new wine. Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you, Ethan. I'm privileged to have a guest with us this morning, uh, Brother Johan Linder. Uh, he's the um, director here in New Zealand of OMF, Overseas Missionary Fellowship. And I know many of you know that we support OMF uh, in the work that they do. Uh, not only are we uh, thankful for all they do in many parts of the world, but uh, a number of our own people have also um, been a part of and been blessed and used uh, OMF also in their ministry and mission where Casey and Chris are with OMF. Uh, ben and Marge, of course, are with OMF. And uh, we also support a number of others uh, from our church that have been um, a part of OMF. OMF used to be called what? Anybody know? You remember? We've 
It's now OMF, but what was it first? China? Inland Mission. Who began the work? I hear murmurings, but yeah, Hudson Taylor. So um, anyway, we're very thankful for our brother Johan and him coming, uh, answering the call and coming to, uh, to take up this position here. I've come to find out brother Johan is actually originally from Switzerland. And so we have another Swiss among us, and we won't hold that against them, but we, we love, welcome all people here. Uh, I've also uh, said Johan introduce himself a bit and what God has done in his uh, life and in his family and where he's been, so I'll let him introduce all those details. I'm looking forward to hearing the message that God has given to him, and I want you to hear it and be blessed as well. So, Brother Johan, would you like to come up, please? Thank you, brother. Let's welcome him, shall we? God bless. Is that working? Can you hear me okay? Um, I've been um, so impressed with uh, how intercultural uh, this church is. Um, and as I look around, I see people from many, many different countries, and I think that's, that's really wonderful. Um, I, w- I just wonder if you could just raise your hand if you were not born in New Zealand, along with me. Oh, wow, that's amazing. That is so incredible. Um, w- what a mix of people we have here. Um, I've, been a, I've been a foreigner in a strange country on a number of different occasions. Um, uh, I was born in, uh, in Sweden. I grew up in a suburb of Stockholm. And, uh, and my family decided to move to Australia when I was nine years old. And so... Um, uh, I look, uh, I look, probably Pakeha, as, as you would say in New Zealand. But actually, I come from a number of different countries uh, because uh, I became a Christian when I was 15 uh, in Australia. Because moving to Australia was quite difficult for my family. Uh, my parents split up and got divorced. Um, we didn't have a lot. Well, I wasn't in a Christian family, so we didn't have any support or relatives or extended family around us. Uh, So it was actually quite a lonely journey growing up uh, in a strange country. Um, I picked up uh, English pretty quickly in a a year or so, but English is my second language. Um, Swedish is actually my first language. Um, And, uh, um, you know, when when my mum left our family, we had dad uh, who was struggling to bring up three small children, and uh, I, I went on a Christian camp and it really made an impression on my life. And I thought, there's something about this God. <laughs> you know, th- wouldn't it be amazing if you could actually know God in person? And uh, I asked a lot of questions. The, the camp leader invited me to go to the Billy Graham crusade, uh, which was on in Sydney in 1979. And uh, I made a commitment to Christ uh, at that, uh, uh, at that uh, when, uh, when Billy Graham spoke. And then he invites people to come up and commit their life to Christ. And I did that. And my life has changed. I was the first Christian in my family. Um, I felt like I'd moved from darkness into light. It was just an incredible uh, experience for me. And I came home and I said to my brother, I said, you need to go to this Christian camp. Uh, there's motorbikes and girls there and they teach you about God and it's great. And he, when he came back, he was also a Christian. Uh, and so my sister started coming along to church with us as well. And uh, so we grew uh, from there. When I was um, about 25... Um, my wife and I really felt God calling us to work overseas to share the good news of Jesus with other people. And uh, so um, we looked at a number of different uh, mission agencies that sent people to countries overseas. And uh, we felt really comfortable with OMF as an agency. And uh, we went off to Thailand. And so we went to Thailand. We had to study the language we had, for about two or three years. We spent full time learning how to speak Thai uh, which was very difficult and ver- a very different culture to what I'd have ever, ever experienced before. Um, before we left, I'd worked for a, a year in a Chinese church, which really helped us to understand more about Asian culture, but it's, Thai culture is still very different again. Uh, and so we worked in Thailand for about 14 years, uh, and then health reasons forced us uh, to come back uh, to Australia. Um, so for the last uh, 15 years, I've been working with Thai people in Sydney. So I've been able to keep my Thai going, which has been really good. And I also managed to keep my Swedish going by 
uh, listening to watching Swedish cop shows on TV, which helps, helps a little bit as well. Um, so it's a really good opportunity to be with you, and I, and I really feel uh, comfortable uh, seeing so many different uh, faces from different parts of the world here. And so I want to talk about a, a, a story today where m people from many different parts of the world came together and God did something amazing among them. Um, you know, because, because the great thing about being a Christian, being a follower of Jesus, is that we have God's Spirit with us. Uh, you know, the Spirit gives us confidence that we are children of God. The Spirit um, sort of helps us to move into the presence of God and have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus, even though he's not here in person with us right now. But we always have the Holy Spirit uh, with us. And uh, this story happened after Jesus had died on the cross uh, for our sins, and then he'd risen again. And so, so the believers all knew that Jesus was alive, but that wasn't enough. They still needed uh, to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And so uh, in Acts chapter 1, verse 8... Um, Jesus kind of gives them a manifesto of what's, what's to come, what's going to happen. He says to them, um, he says, it's not for you to set the times and the dates the Father has set by his own authority. That's, that's not in your control. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And so today, I want to look at the coming of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost and what it means. You know, the day of Pentecost, it's important to understand what the day of Pentecost actually was. It was a Jewish day, uh, a historical day that the Jews celebrated every year. And it was to celebrate the harvest. But it was also the day that God gave the tablets to Moses, where, where uh, Moses brought down the tablets of the law of God from Mount Sinai to the people and presented the, the law of God to them. And so the day of Pentecost is really significant in many different ways. It was a day of thanksgiving and rejoicing about what God had done for his people. It was a day when... Israel, as a nation, actually became a nation under God because the whole idea was that God would bring his people together under himself with God as the king, the Lord, who would rule over them. They weren't actually intended to have a physical man-king who would rule over them. That wasn't God's intention from the beginning. It was, he gave them the law and he said, I want you to live as priests uh, under me. So here we see God forming the people of God into a kingdom. But it's a different kind of kingdom. But it's a very confusing story in many ways. And people get really confused about what it means. And that's what the people asked in, um, uh, what is it? It's in uh, verse 38. When the people see what happens, they say, what does it mean? What does it actually mean? Uh, verse, verse 12, amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? And so I want to tease that out a little bit. I want to explore what is the actual meaning of this incident. First of all, we have the sound of the rushing wind. We have flames of fire coming down. You know, God didn't do this by accident. But then it can also be very confusing because we think, well, what is, has this actually happened before? You know, what is God actually meaning to communicate by doing it in this way? So we need to think about where the precedents are. Where was the rushing wind? Can you think of the rushing wind? Where has that happened before? Where's the fire happened before? If, um, if I think of fire, I would have to think of uh, Elijah's ministry more than anything else in the Old Testament. Fire came down Mount Carmel when Elijah was facing up to the prophets of Baal and fire came down and consumed the sacrifice. Uh, there was fire when Elijah was taken up to heaven in a chariot 
There was fire when he came out of the mouth of the cave and God passed by with his presence. There was a rushing wind. There's the rushing wind again. And there was the fire as Elijah walked, um, as uh, God passed by. So Elijah was a, was a man who was filled with the Spirit and had enormous power and impact in his ministry. And then what about the languages? Where does that come from? I can't think of... Can you think of any other incident in the Old Testament where people are taught different languages and learn, overcome language barriers? No. But there's an opposite one. There's an opposite one where people are confused in their language and they can't understand each other and they are actually forced apart. The Tower of Babel, Genesis chapter 11. And so they wanted to gather together, they wanted to build this tower to show how important and wonderful they were and God comes down and he confuses their speech and he spreads them out. And that has been a curse ever since that we can't understand one another because we all come from different countries. But here, God is doing the exact opposite. He is helping them to communicate with each other so that they can all hear the wonders of God in their own tongue and language. Isn't that amazing? So God is actually reversing the curse. He's bringing back what has been lost. He is enabling his people to communicate with one another and the people are actually hearing about the praises of God in their own language. How wonderful is that? So what God is showing here is that the curse on the human race from the time of Babel is now being reversed. God is bringing people from all over the world to come together under the Lord Jesus Christ. And in Jesus, there is an identity and a language that is over and above people's culture, language, and nationality. And that is what we see here, right, in this church. Instead of building a tower that challenges God's rule over the earth, we are now part of a kingdom established by Jesus Christ himself in which the Holy Spirit is building for God's, a building for God's glory and using his people to do it. And you are a part of that kingdom. I am a part of that kingdom. If you believe in Jesus and his resurrection from the dead, then you are part of this new building that God is building in the world today. And one of the greatest joys of the Christian life I have found is working together with people from all over the world in sharing the good news of Jesus with other people. When I worked with OMF, I worked with people from every continent in the world. And we're brought together not by our common interests, not by our common age, but our common passion to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. I've worked with Filipinos, Malaysians, Brazilians, Americans, Germans, Swiss, um, Africans, people from everywhere. And it hasn't always been easy because there's so much room for miscommunication and misunderstanding. But when we see Thai people, when we see people who've never heard about the Lord Jesus Christ before coming to know him, that is such a wonderful thing. And it shows what is possible. It shows the power of God working in people's lives. And that's the first lesson that we can learn from this amazing event. God is reversing the curse that comes from people only speaking their own language and taking pride in their own culture, thinking somehow that my culture is better than everybody else's. So God does this by bringing together people from all nations, cultures, languages and tribes to work together in humility and love to share the good news of Jesus with others. And language is the key. Now, if I was going to think of a superpower that I was going to give the apostles of Jesus and they could do anything at all, you know, we love watching these uh, Marvel X-Men movies, don't we, where everybody's uh, a mutant and they've got these amazing powers, you know, and we dream about what if, what if I had this power? What if I could fly? What if I could uh, had laser eyes that could burn anything and anyone? What, what if I could just lift buildings with my bare muscles? Uh, you know, what if I could 
What if I could turn everything into ice? But here, God gives the power through the Holy Spirit to speak different languages. What's that about? Jesus said in verse eight, in chapter 1, verse 8, he says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. You know, if I was going to give a power, I'd you know, probably think of something like raising people from the dead or you know, just healing uh, diseases at a single touch. But that's not the power that they received. The power was, you could probably move the slides along a little bit. Well, I've moved along quite a few now. <laughs> you can move along, keep going. Okay, reversing the curse, being there, done that. Language is the key. Okay, that's what we're up to. Um, why, why is language so important? Well, it's because language is the way that we reach a person's heart. We talk about heart language. It's when we understand something in a heart language that we really understand something and take it into our, our identity, our belonging, who we really are. And it's only, it's only really when someone hears about God in their own heart language that they're really able to understand what Christ has done for them. And that's why missionaries go to such great lengths to reach, and spend, to reach people and spend so much effort translating the Bible into all these different languages. And it's actually one of our core values in OMF. When Hudson Taylor first went to China, he was ridiculed because he dressed like the Chinese. He was one of the first missionaries to do this. He wasn't the only one. There were others as well. But he dressed like the Chinese. He put his hair up in a ponytail like, like a Chinese man and shaved his head uh, in, the, in the right way. Uh, he ate Chinese food and he said, if you want to join the Chinese mission, you have to eat Chinese food. And you have to learn to speak Chinese. Now, that was radical in those days. Today, we think, duh, you know, <laughs> how obvious is that? But in those days, it wasn't obvious at all because English gentlemen who became missionaries thought that uh, by speak, you know, when we go out and speak to the Chinese, uh, we do it with our suits on and uh, we do it in a very Western way. And uh, that's why Hudson Taylor made such an impact. And that way of doing mission has become almost second nature now. Of course we need to dress like the people that we go to uh, share with. Of course we need to share their food. Of course we need to learn their language. But it wasn't easy uh, for the church to change their thinking in that way. And we have to learn the language. That is the most important thing. Now, when we went to Thailand, I would have really appreciated this gift of being able to speak in a foreign language very quickly, but it wasn't the case, that it, was, it wasn't the way it was. We had to adjust in all kinds of ways. Thai culture is also very different to our Western culture, and I had to learn to behave and speak in different ways to what I had done before. And being 30 years old when we went, you know, I had 30 years of training to do things one way, and then all of a sudden I had to learn to do things another way. And it was embarrassing. It was difficult. Um, I would often call older ladies in the church uh, crazy instead of calling them auntie because the word for auntie and crazy are very close. Tell me if you can hear it. Okay? I bet you can't. Okay? The word for manti is pa. The word for crazy is ba. Okay? The difference is in the pa. Okay? Auntie is pa. Crazy is ba. Okay? It's a big B. Right? Now, okay? You might not hear it. I didn't, I didn't hear it for, for quite some time. Okay? And I'm sure the older aunties in the church were quite offended by me saying that many times. Another time, I went into a coffee shop and I asked for a flood of coffee instead of a cup of coffee because cup and flood are quite close in words. Another time, I translated a testimony in front of a whole year of TAFE students in a TAFE college and we had a short-term team come from America and this tall basketball guy, who was a Korean-American, and he was giving a testimony and he was talking about an experience from his childhood, and he said, I was very bitter about that experience. And I, I translated, and I said, he was raped. 
because the words are so close and I still get confused. One word is komkun and the other word is komkun. Okay? The only difference is tonal. Okay? And I still forget which one's which. But I try, so every time I, every time I come to that word, I have to think, now which one is it? <laughs> okay. We, we weren't allowed to preach in Thailand until we could actually speak in the local language. And that was a good thing because it forced us to learn. I, I learned more in my language study preparing sermons uh, than, I did, uh, than I did a lot of the other time, uh, just talking to people. But it's through, a, it's through a, their mother tongue that a person really comes to grips with the gospel and is able to build and nurture their relationship with God. And so it's really important that people learn to speak uh, in another language. You know, when we learned to speak Thai fluently, everything changed and we were able to minister to the Thai people in a, to a deeper level than we ever were before. You know, after we'd been living in central Thailand for a few years, and Thailand, central Thailand is like 99% Buddhist, by the way, so the number of Christians is less, much less than 1%. Very, very few Christians. But we saw a young lady come to believe in Christ, and uh, she had many things holding her back spiritually. She couldn't believe that God actually loved her. That was a concept that she just could not get her heart and her head around. And so one evening, she, all this frustration in her life and all the trauma that she suffered kind of built up to a point where she felt that she just needed to talk to someone. And we were living right next to her, so she came and talked to us. And she spent about two hours with us. It was more, I think it was more than two hours. And <clears throat> she just poured out her life. And we understood. We could understood. We could respond. We could pray for her. You know, she'd, she'd been, she was neglected as a child. Uh, her parents didn't want her. She, she was quite a good-looking young lady, but um, her parents didn't want her. She grew up with her grandmother. Uh, Boys had deceived her. She'd had two late-term abortions. Uh, She'd had curses put on her uh, by other people. It was just a tragic life. um, But she was able to pour all this out to us because we were safe. We could understand. We are also not part of that community, so she knew we weren't going to gossip about her uh, to other people, but that we would keep the confidence that she had shown in us. And that was life transforming for her. It's the first time she understood that God loves me for who I am. And all of these things have happened to me and not my fault. The bad things that have happened to me has actually brought me to the point where I need to, to trust God for, for his forgiveness, for his kindness, for his care for me. Language makes all the difference. When you're able to minister to someone in their own language, it can be life-changing. And the Holy Spirit is the driver of all this. It's the Holy Spirit that enables us and gives us uh, the ability to persevere even when language learning is difficult. And, uh, you know, the, the Holy Spirit is what drives us into the presence of God and helps us to love other people when it's not easy so often if we, look, we look for some external sign that someone has the Holy Spirit, just like you know, we look for some external sign that they've believed, and it's sometimes very confusing and very difficult to do that. You're not always going to find a sign like that because it's something that living inside of us, the Holy Spirit lives inside us. And the Holy Spirit is a person. The Holy Spirit, you know, enables believers to to live a Christian life. It gives us the power to actually continue when life gets tough. You know, the Holy Spirit even prays for us in Romans chapter 8, verses 26 and 27. The Holy Spirit that guides believers into, into truth. The Holy Spirit sanctifies us, goes on working in our lives, cleansing us and helping us uh, to to leave our bad habits and our sinful natures behind and move on towards what is godly and what is right and to hunger for doing the right thing and not just to please ourselves. And he gives us assurance to know that we are children of God, that we belong to him, that we are now 
uh, in a new state, that we have been born into a, into a new kind of person. Romans chapter 8, verses 15 and 16. And if you have a relationship with Jesus and, and you are a part of a Christian and community, community in the church, you are, you are filled with the Holy Spirit. We are filled with the Holy Spirit together. The Bible is clear on that. But you can make the Holy Spirit unhappy by sinning or turning against what God wants for you. Or you can walk in step with the Spirit by listening to God's Word and obeying it. And sometimes the Holy Spirit will do amazing things in your own life to encourage you and to show you his love in a special way. Now, I'd love to see us all being able to speak in different languages right now. And in a sense, I think you already can because you've all come from so many different places around the world. But I, but I think this particular event was a one-time event that God is using to show his people that you are now living in a new era. Things are now going to change. Language is going to become the most important way in which you are going to communicate God's love across cultures. And it's, it's no accident that, you know, we see later in Acts, God chooses a, a man like Paul to, sh- to, to take the gospel to reach out uh, across the, the Jewish cultural barriers uh, to be engaging with the Gentiles. You know, at first it seems counterintuitive because God doesn't always do things in the way that we expect. He takes someone who is the Jew of Jews and then he gives him the, the power to actually be reaching into the Gentile world. But it, from another point of view, it also makes sense. He spoke Greek well. He was educated in both Greek and Hebrew culture and he could use these skills to communicate the gospel across to other cultures as well. And we see this all through Acts, how Paul is able to command an audience with all kinds of people because of his knowledge of of language and culture. Kings and queens and merchants and Jews and Roman soldiers. Can you speak a different language? I bet many of you can. Are you prepared to learn a new language? It's much easier for people who already speak more than one language to learn yet another one. Think of it as your spiritual superpower because it enables you to communicate the good news of Jesus to people who may not be able to hear it in their own language. You might come from a people group where very, very few people are Christians and you might think, oh, it's so hard. It's so difficult, but actually it's a wonderful opportunity to be sharing the gospel of Jesus to people who've never heard it before. I hear so many young people, I used to pastor in a Chinese church, and most of the young people used to groan because their parents made them go off and, uh, to Chinese classes on Saturdays. And they just go, oh, I just hated Chinese classes. And I just think, well, what an opportunity that would be. God has actually been preparing you ever since you were a young child uh, to, be, to be sharing, uh, to to understand another language and to have the opportunity to share that with people who've never heard of him before. So I'll wrap up. What what, what does it mean for us now? Well, first of all, um, the Holy Spirit is the one who guides and leads us. And it's wonderful to see so many different nations and people coming together in one place. But we also need to think, where is God guiding us as a church? Where is he leading us? You know, how can we work together to become uh, a witnessing community in the way that Jesus really intended for us? You know, it's wonderful that you're sending people out, but at the same time, it's also wonderful to see how many different nations and cultures are living all around us here in Auckland and the opportunities God has given us to be reaching out to those people. Language is so important in God's work, and that is why so much effort is spent on Bible translation, on producing Christian radio and television broadcasts, and uh, uh, for cross-cultural workers to learn the language of the local people that they're ministering to. And we read to to recognize that. And so uh, thinking about how God has gifted us in languages helps us to move forward in thinking about how we are going to be effective as witnesses into the world that God has called us. 
whether it's our work situation, our family situation, our relatives, or, or the community around us as a church. You know, the book of Acts is a testimony to us how God worked in the life of the early church. And it gives us a template for, t- for reaching the world around us. When we need to go out in dependence on the Holy Spirit, speaking the gospel in a language that people can understand. And the work is not finished yet. There are so many countries and people groups and, uh, and nations that had never heard the gospel before. God did not intend for us to be just passive churchgoers. He wants each of us to be involved in sharing the good news of Jesus with those around us. How can we be involved? Well, I'll just suggest six different ways. Okay, There may be more, um, but six is probably enough to start with. You can actually go yourself. And it's great to see this church has sent out over 20 different workers. But there are also other ways. You can be involved in sending. So standing behind those who go, praying for them, um, uh, receiving their prayer letters and actively actively praying for them uh, each time that you receive a prayer letter. Or praying for them daily that God will empower them uh, in their ministry. You can learn about mission. Uh, There's um, so many different great missionary biographies that we can read that gives us and encourages us uh, about working um, in uh, different cultures. We can mobilise new people as well. We can uh, think of our young people and thinking of how they may be effective in reaching across cultural barriers. Um, My son grew up in Thailand. He speaks Thai fluently. And I keep saying to him, you know, that's a great gift that you've got. You can use that to be reaching out to Thai people. And he's thinking about that. And uh, he's also been involved a little bit in our Thai ministry as well. And we can welcome people. We can welcome people into our midst. Welcome people to church. That's a good start. But also to be welcoming for people. International students uh, are hosting uh, people from different cultures and nations into our home. What part are you going to play in sharing the good news of Christ to those around you? Why don't we just take a moment and and pray and just commit and say, Lord, I'm here. Thank you for all the gifts and the blessings that you've given into my life. How can I use what you have given me uh, to serve you? Let's pray. Father, we thank you that you make us all so different. Father, we come from different backgrounds, different families, different cultures, uh, different occupations. And it's just so wonderful how we can all come together uh, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Uh, But Father, we know that there are also many people who are outside of your blessing, who still have no knowledge of the Lord Jesus, both in our communities here and uh, also uh, overseas. And Father, we thank you that you are calling your people. But we pray, Father, that for all of us, that you will guide us and lead us. Show us how we can be effective ministers for you, to be a witness wherever we are, in our workplace, in our family, in our cultural group, in our community here. We pray, Father, that uh, you will uh, just guide us and lead us by your Holy Spirit. We thank you that your Holy Spirit gives us power. And we pray that you will continue to energize us and help us to be passionate about sharing your love with those around us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Johan. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Um, And it is amazing that uh, so many of you, I know you can speak uh, more than one language. And I've always admired that. Uh, I've not been uh, able to do that. When I was in high school, I took a few years of French, I believe. It wasn't because I had a burning passion to know French and it was because there was a pretty girl in French class. I thought it would help me to get to know her. 
but now French hasn't been a big help to me over the years, uh, all the many French people in the country. But uh, has God gifted you and uh, use that superpower that God has gifted you with to share Christ where you are? You're a missionary as well. God may have you stay in here, but being in missions is for everybody. We share, we give, we send so others may go. This is all part of our mission work, our mission project. So thank you, Brother uh, Johan. And I apologize again for the calling you Swiss. Uh, Sweden, Sw uh, Swedish, Swiss, it kind of sounds similar to me. It's kind of like the crazy auntie thing, you know. So I do apologize. So again, just be praying, Lord. What do you want me to do for missions this year? What is it that you would have of me? Maybe God has someone on your mind to share Christ with. Maybe oh, be praying, God, what would you have me to give so others can go? God, maybe you want to send me. Are you open to being sent and preparing and getting ready for that? What is it that God is calling you to do? At this time, I'd like to ask uh, Brother Bong to come and uh, give us a brief report on missions at IBC in this past year and what we're looking forward to this year. Thank you, Brother Bong. Thank you, Pastor Ken. Thank you, Brother Johan. Um, okay. So I'll, I prepared about 600, nah, 200 slides, nah. Okay, just be quick. Um, okay, where, where, where we're at. Um, okay, so that's a good first slide. This was our target last year. And for last year, for, um, you can see there all, all the, you know, I don't have to name them um, individually. Uh, but our total budget for this year is 111,600. Isn't it amazing? And we have our monthly mission target of 9,300. Now, just would like something. Mission apartment, we put there $6,000 because we have a little plan to um, refurbish our mission apartment. So that's, that one is big. That would be covered from this year's budget and then for next year's budget as well. We will, uh, another slide. So, there you go, brothers and sisters. Um, that's what we have. We have prayed, and this is the result. This is just our 10 months uh, from September of last year until June of this year. So we have, we have uh, based on our target, we have, for the 10 months, we have $93,000 as a target. And then the actual money that came in is $88,933. Praise God for that. A little bit less, but praise God for that. And um, however, you may probably wonder our actual month, uh, 10 months expense is lower. Um, um, part of that is before we have 22 missionaries that we support. And uh, as you know, uh, Robert and Ruth have since retired. And also uh, Aaron and um, uh, Anna Hills uh, also. Um, so... Now we're down to 20 missionaries, so our monthly expense is uh, 78,000, uh, 10 months expense is about $78,000. Praise God, for the six years I've been in the uh, missions uh, ministry, we have always been, um, by God's grace, uh, we have always been uh, able to uh, provide for the commitment we have every year, and praise God for that. And uh, this is who we are, folks. This is, this is our identity. Uh, so that's for last year and now for this year. Okay, this, this will cover from next month, which is September 2022, all the way to August again next year. And this is what we're planning to be, planning to do. Okay, as usual. Uh, by the way, if you want more uh, details of this, come see me. Um, and then 
then I can give you more details about that. For example, New Zealand overseas, uh, overseas missions partners, we have 20 at the moment. How much do we give for this, for that, for that? Come see me if you want those details. And also, okay, so that's, that's our budget. And um, it will amount to $111,000. Folks, we do not have this yet, as you know. And this is by faith, as what uh, Pastor Ken has um, said earlier. Pray to God, Lord, what's my part for this year? What's, 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 what's the goal for this year as far as your personal um, uh, goal and target? So we don't have this yet, but by God's grace, we will. So, so that would mean we just, just over $2,000 uh, in a weekly, on a weekly basis. So, this is us, this is our target, and hopefully we pray about it, we commit this to God, and uh, yeah, we will, we will get it done by God's grace. So, that's about it. Um, after the service, as you know, we have uh, something prepared. You have brought your favorite dish to share. Um, so, Pastor Ken, uh, after the service, probably pray as well for the food so that we can carry on. Okay, thank you guys. Thank you, Brother Bong. Well done. So keep these things in mind and pray, God, what would you have of me this year? A few announcements and then we'll be dismissed for food. So Pastor Mike, would you like to come for those? Okay, quickly, just a few things to share with you before we're dismissed. If you have your bulletins on the inside pages, remember coming up on the 4th of September is our Father's Day celebration, and uh, Chandra had asked about sending a poem. Now, Chandra's not in here right now, but she did ask about sending in a poem. So here was what she was asking for, is that if you could write some kind of a poem for Father's Day, keep it nice. Keep it up, upbeat. Send it in by the 21st of August, and then Chandra and a few of the others are going to look through, and they're going to select a couple of those to read out. You can see the address there, the email address, office at ibcchurch.com. That's where you can send that in. Also, we have coming up on the, uh, the weekend of November the 3rd through the 5th on uh, the Married Couples Retreat, the Married Couples Retreat down in Papamo at the Pacific Park Christian Camp. So again, if you're interested in coming along to that, the cost is going to be approximately $200. There's going to be a little bit of variables there that may uh, make that uh, a little bit less. So $200 for the couple, and that's going to be at Pacific Park on the 3rd through the 5th of November. That's Thursday through Saturday. So just let me know if you're interested in that. We also have a sign-up sheet, and you can put your name down already. We also have an Israel trip coming up in 2023. That's going to be somewhere in the end of March, 1st of April. That's kind of our general time frame. We haven't got the exact dates down just yet. We've had a few people that have expressed interest, but if that's something that you're interested in, come and see me and let me know about that, and then we'll, we'll go ahead and give you more of the details. We're going to be having more meetings as the next uh, couple months and so goes on, and we can give you more details about the exact cost, or at least as close to the exact cost as we can, and then those dates. Continue to pray for our missionaries, David and Wan Yi Chung. Continue to pray for them this week, as well as our other missionaries. We've posted the newest letters in the back just near the kitchen, and you can read up on those uh, at any time. Before we're dismissed, maybe you're celebrating a birthday or a wedding anniversary. Is anyone this week coming up with a birthday? We'd like to celebrate with you. Any birthdays this week? Anyone? How about wedding anniversaries? Anyone with a wedding anniversary? No birthday, no wedding anniversaries. No? Pastor Ken, do you want to come and dismiss us in a time of prayer? All right, let's stand together. And uh, we're also going to give thanks for the food. And I encourage you, please stay behind and enjoy some fellowship and some food with us. Uh, be sure to uh, greet uh, our new faces that you might see around. Uh, and, of course, uh, Brother Johan. And thank you for coming. Thank you for sharing. And it's good to uh, get to know you and, and uh, put a face to the name here uh, with everyone at the church. Let us pray. Thank you, my Father, for the encouragement that we've had this morning from the Word. 
as we see at the beginning of of the church and the giving of the Holy Spirit and the 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 change that you you caused the reversing of of the Tower of Babel and and calling nations together through Jesus Christ and we thank you Lord that we see a bit of that even at our own church here we pray Lord that you would just stir in us this month the passion for missions the passion and desire to share uh, the good news of Christ right here at home. And also, Lord, the willingness to, and, uh, to be open to sending so others may go, but also being willing even in our own heart to say, Lord, I am here. Would you send me? So, Father, do a good work in our church, I pray. And thank you for the, the report that Bong brought and the, the target that we have set. And Lord, may May, by your grace, we achieve that. May we receive that. Thank you, Father, for the food that we're about to enjoy and all the hands that have uh, put it together. Thank you in Jesus' name. And we say, amen. God bless. Let's enjoy some fellowship and some food. You're dismissed. <laughs>